This video, I'll go through accounting, chapter five, lesson two, the work together problem. Uh, this is straight out of the book here, and it says, reconciling a bank statement and recording a bank service charge. Forms are given in the working papers, except for I gave you one in a spreadsheet, looks like this, and I will guide you through this example. So on August 29th, of the current year, Bright and White Landry received a bank statement dated August 28th. The following information is obtained from the bank statement and from the records of the business. Okay, so we have all this information. Number one, prepare a bank statement reconciliation. Use August 29th of the current year as a date. So the first thing I'll do is come up here to date and I'll type in August 29. Happen to be doing this in the year of 2020. Okay. So the next thing I should do, according to our book on page uh, 130, remember there's the steps to doing a reconciliation of a bank statement. We did the date, that was step one. Step two, in the left amount column, list the balance brought forward on the check stub. So this is number two here is the balance brought forward, which um, it says here, wait, balance on the previous check stub. Let's see where we can find it. Balance on the previous check stub number 309. There's what we needed. 2822. So 2822 here. And it is formatted in dollars. Good. And it was on stub number 309. So we'll type that in here. All right, so we finished step two. Step three said in the space for bank charges, list any charges. Did we have any bank charges? Here we had a service charge of $20 is what it says. So step three, we'll enter service charge and it was in the amount of 20. And since I didn't format that in dollars, we'll just hit that currency button. And then that should be the total of all of our bank charges. So we could add them up by saying equals this plus this, but we really don't need to because there's only one. So it's really just equals this. $20. So that added up there. Uh, what does the next thing say? Oh, right. The adjusted check stub balance here. So we would go ahead and say equals the balance on this previous check stub minus the twenty dollars is twenty eight oh two okay next step write the ending balance shown on the bank statement in the right amount column so the balance on the bank statement according to our um, rough notes here from the problem is two thousand seven twelve so we'll come up here and type that in and then what do we have for the next thing I believe is outstanding deposits so did our problem mention any of those we do have an outstanding deposit um, from the 28th of $300 so that didn't make it on our bank statement so we'll go with uh, the day of 8 28 8 of 20 because I'm doing this in 2020. Could be a different year by the time you watch it. All right, $300. So total outstanding deposits. Again, I could just type in 300. I could add multiple amounts together. It's 300. So we'll go ahead and put a dollar sign on that and we'll put dollar currency on that as well. So our new subtotal since it is a deposit, it would be the balance per the bank statement plus the outstanding deposit. 
So our new subtotal is $3,012. All right. So um, we subtotaled. That was step seven. And now in step eight of bank statement reconciliation, we're going to list our outstanding checks. So what did our problem say we had? We had number 306 and number 308. So we'll go ahead and type 306, 308, and their amounts were 140 and 70. And we'll go ahead and make that into currency. So our total outstanding check should be equals this cell. We click on it plus this cell is $210. I like Excel to do the math for me. Well, this is Google Sheets, but same difference. Um, and that is our total outstanding checks. Now we're going to have to calculate the adjusted bank balance. So all we would need to do for that is to take, put a formula here, equals the 3,012, click there, go minus sign, total outstanding checks, and our adjusted bank balance is 2,802. And remember step 10 was to compare the adjusted balances, check stub balance, adjusted bank balance. They're both 2,802. So we equal and we have to equal. And if we don't, we better go figure out what check we missed or deposit or bank charge we missed because they need to equal. Or perhaps we have something wrong in our books. That's a much worse answer. You hope it's easier than that. But it's always important to do this right away after you get those bank statements to make sure you don't have any problems. It's just one of those checks on your cash that you can do. Okay, so part two of the work together. Record the service charge on check stub number 309, which is right here. So how do we do this? Well, we have a balance brought forward, which we know from our notes. Remember down here, we know that our balance brought forward is 2822. So we'll go ahead and fill that in. And we know that we don't really have a deposit, so it's just going to carry down a subtotal here. And then over here in the other area is where we record our service charge. So we'll just write service charge 20, which is what we had, remember? So then we have a new subtotal here of 20. And then we'll go equals this previous subtotal minus the 20 is our new subtotal. And we could make these all into currency. Remember, we haven't written this check yet, so we don't have an amount this check or a balance to carry forward yet. Check number 309 is still hanging out over here, and it's unwritten at this point. Okay. So, one more thing. Record the service charge on journal page 16. Ooh, there's our first hint, page 16. We'll type that in. Use memorandum number 77 as the source document. Okay. So, we'll put document number M77. We caught that. And the date is... Uh, the 29th, so 8-29-20. Okay, so our debit account is going to be the, the second thing. We did the date as the first thing. Um, the debited account, we've been using miscellaneous expense. Unless we really wanted to open up a new general ledger account for bank charges or something, miscellaneous expense is a great place for it. 
And then the credit is going to be to cash, of course, because we did actually pay it. Even though we didn't write a check, it's a memorandum, the amount was taken out of our cash. So the amount was 20. So we fill that in in both our debit and our credit columns. We format it nicely. And there's our journal entry. That is your work together 5-2. Good luck as you do the on your own problem.